On September 4, 2012, the U.S. national debt reached $16 trillion. This is a very large number, and it's very difficult to wrap your head around, much like the number of stars and the scale of the universe. The best way to understand it is to visualize it. Let's start small. This is $50,000, roughly the U.S. median household income. It doesn't take up too much space and you could easily carry it around your pockets. This is $1 million in $100 bills. It weighs about 22 pounds and can easily be carried around in a duffel bag. If you're careful and you invest reasonably, you could live comfortably off of this for a very long time. This is what a hundred million dollars looks like. It weighs just over a ton and will fit on the back of a pickup truck. You should be set for life, although people have won this amount in the lottery or close to it and managed to lose it all. This is a hundred million in gold. It's about a foot and a half cubed and weighs about four tons, more than a car. You see, gold is very dense. Even a small looking amount has some significant weight to it. This is ten billion dollars. It's a hundred times more than a hundred million dollars. You'll need a truck or two to move it. In gold, it's about four hundred tons. Due to this weight, you would need about 10 trucks to move the gold. This is $16 trillion in $100 bills. This is our national debt. You couldn't spend this if you tried. If you were to earn $10,000 per second, it would take over 50 years to reach $16 trillion. In gold, it weighs just a tad over 316,000 tons. If we were to divide this up between every man, woman, and child in America, everyone would get about $52,000. Only, we don't get $52,000. We each owe $52,000. Some people will tell you that we don't actually owe any money at all, and that the debt isn't anything to worry about. But they're wrong. This is completely unsustainable, and we need to cut spending soon. Our debt is catching up to us. Our government is irresponsibly preying up more money. This is causing real inflation that we are seeing in the price of fuel and food and goods. It's why the price of gold has been skyrocketing. You see, you can't print up more gold. You can't devalue gold like you can money. If we went back to a gold standard, it would force the government to act more responsible with our money. And it is our money, not theirs. So who do we blame for this? It's not President Obama's fault. It's not President Bush's fault either. This is your fault. You see, government belongs to all of us. This is your fault for thinking we belong to government. This is your fault for deluding yourself into thinking you're a victim of society. This is your fault for voting in politicians who have no regard for your liberty and will gladly feed your delusion and sense of entitlement. This is your fault for thinking rights are derived from government and electing people who think the same. This is your fault for putting your petty, irrelevant, selfish, entitlement greed ahead of the rights of others. And this is your fault for teaching your children the same. You see, the only person responsible for yourself is you.